you see what Christian charity will get you? I never should have let Daisy talk me into hiring Paul Miller. Oh, come on now. I know Glenn. I hired him once, too, you know. The day I hired him, he locked up for me at closing time and left the spigot running on the molasses barrel. I know he's got two left feet. Claude, put that down and start loading the Cartwright supplies. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Wilson. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I mean, uh, right away, sir. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. Hello, little Joe. Good morning, Daisy. Good morning, Daisy. You look pretty as a peach tree in the rain. Oh. Hey, boy, let me give you a hand with those. No, I can handle them. Good morning, Daisy. Good morning. I'll be with you in a minute. Seems to be getting along pretty well at his job, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Now, don't go, Daisy. This is the last of the load. I don't know how it could have happened, Mr. Oh. Wilson. I... Well, I do. And it's the last time it's going to happen. Now, take off that apron and get out of here. You're fired. But you can take it out of my pay. What pay? With all the damages you've caused me, I don't owe you a cent. <laughs> it's, it's really all my fault. He was only trying to be nice. And... Poor dear. Oh, I have your favorite on the special today, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, ribs and cabbage. And the coffee's fresh. Yep. It'll give us a chance to talk. Um, I, uh, I have a favor to ask of you, Mr. Cartwright. I'll go get the things ready. Daisy's a wonderful woman, but... I'd do her a favor if I could, but... I'm a coward. Last time I had that... Claude Miller out in the Ponderosa. Cause a stampede. Yeah, Bob, but that, that wasn't his fault. He's just excited about getting that job. He got all excited and, and yelled, Yippee! And that one Yippee cost me ten head of cattle. Joe, I know how you feel. But I cannot have that man out on the Ponderosa. I can't afford him. The fact of the matter is, Daisy, that, uh, that he's, he's talking to Thompson about, about a mare, shoeing a mare, yeah. You never were any good at telling fibs. Your pa isn't coming because he was afraid I'd ask him to give Claude another job, isn't that it? Yeah, but uh, the mare did throw a shoe honest. Well, now, little Joe, to get to that favor, I was going to ask your pa... Oh, uh, let me get you a cup of coffee first. Hey, Daisy, I wouldn't worry too much about Claude. He's going to find something else to do. Oh, I know. But the poor dear, he's had so many little setbacks lately. You know, he's looking awful peaked. I don't think he's getting enough to eat. You know, little Joe, you and me, we're just about the only two people in the world who know that what Claude's really like. Well, I know a lot of men that can handle themselves better than Claude, but to be real honest with you, I don't think I know anybody who's better on the inside than he is. Yeah, but you and me, we're just about the only two friends he's got left. What about those two miners up in Box Canyon? They're friends of his, aren't they? 
Clancy and Tarbish, those worthless good-for-nothings, why, they're not a good influence for Claude. They're too much like him. Well, no, that's not what I mean. Yeah, what you mean is they're not getting anywhere. I know the only thing I've ever seen them pull out of those diggings are weeds. Well, some people are no good working for other people. Now, I think if Claude had a chance to be on his own, to be his own boss, why, it would make a new man of him. And that's where you come in. Me? How? Well, now, the only thing in the whole world that Claude owns is that land that fast-talking salesman sold him. You know, up near Box Canyon? Yeah. And I want you to buy it from him. What? What, the, that cactus patch? That, that worthless... I know it's worthless, but that's why you've got to buy it. I wanna, come on, Daisy, give me a break. I want to help Claude... With my savings, $600. $600? Daisy, honey, that whole piece of land isn't worth six dollars. Well, six hundred dollars will give Claude a stake and make him feel like a new man, and then we can get married. Has he asked you yet? Well, how can he? He's always broke. Oh. Hey, Daisy, I'd like to help you. I wouldn't even know how to go, go oh, about it. Oh, now, off little me. Joe, you've got to. He won't take it from me. He's got pride. Well, think about it. Six hundred dollars for that. Oh, little Joe, I love Claude. And he's worth an awful lot more than $600 to me. I've got my heart set on something, and this is the only way I know about getting it. Now, you got to promise me one thing. You won't tell a living soul where that money came from, not even your father. Daisy, me darling. You're a nut. <laughs> but you're a wonderful nut. And don't you worry, I won't say a word about it to Pa. <laughs> Hey, Pa? Oh, good. I was just looking for you. You ready to leave? Yeah, well, there, there's a favor I wanted to ask you. And does this have anything to do with Daisy's favor? No, I just want to know if I could stay in town for a little while. Hmm? Uh, just a little while. Then, then I'll go borrow a horse from Thompson. Well, it better be a little while. we got to get all that hay in tomorrow. Thanks, Pa. Oh, just a minute. I want to point something out about your friend Claude. You remember what I used to say to you fellas when you were little? Unless you learn to stand on your own two feet. You're going to keep falling on your face. I think you're absolutely right. Look, all Daisy and I are trying to do is just prop Claude up a little, that's all. I just don't understand you boys. Why do you always pick up lost causes? I guess it's heredity. Oh, get anything else for you, Mr. Slauson? No, thank you, Miss Daisy. That was right fine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Oh, that's the new deputy the sheriff took on last week. I feel terrible about you having to wait around like this, little Joe. I can't imagine where Claude got to. Well, he had a pretty rough morning. He'll be back. Oh, you gotta move. A uh, red tent on Black Jack. Oh, here he is now. Oh, it's you. Clancy, what have you done with Claude? Well, uh, nothing, Miss Daisy. We just brought him back. But, you know, uh, he won't come in until he finds out if you're mad at him. Oh, of course not. Claude, you come on in here. Howdy, Miss Daisy. Howdy. Oh, hello, little Joe. Tarbush. Claude. Come on in. I'm sorry, Daisy. Claude, I'll bet you haven't had a thing to eat all day. How about a nice piece of fruit? You know where we found him, ma'am? It was out to his shack, and he was packing and getting ready to head for the hills. That's right. They're heading for the hills. Oh, Claude. You weren't going to leave Daisy, were you, Claude? Oh, no, no. Of course not. I, well, I was just thinking, well, uh, after losing my job and all, I... You know, I told him, I said, Claude, you've been in a lot worse messes than this. You know, little Joe, when Tarbush and me picked up this, this little fella the first time, when we was uh, coming out west, you know where we found him? No, oh, where? Uh, Smack dab in the middle of nowhere. The Indians had burned all the wagons and scattered the rest of the party. And him... <laughs> him, they just left there. They, they, they wouldn't even scalp him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Didn't even scalp him. <laughs> Thanks a lot, fellas, for bringing him down here. Hey, Claude, sit down here. Sit down, I've been waiting to talk to you. I'm real sorry about busting them lanterns, little Joe. I, I don't have the change on me now, but, but I'll make it good. I promise you. Gives me a good idea. We'll just make that part of the deal. Deal? Yeah, you see, uh... 
Hey, you see, I'm very, very interested in buying your land. What? Now, wait a minute. Look, now, business is business, right, Claude? All right, now, I'm going to offer you $600 for the property and then not a, not a penny more. $600? Oh, I couldn't let you do that, little Joe. Why, why it wouldn't be honest. Well, you're not doubting little Joe's honesty. Now, uh, wait a minute, Miss Daisy. Let me handle this. Little Joe, are you playing straight? Straight. 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 He means it. Better accept his offer before he changes his mind, Claude. Deal, Claude? But $600, why, why that's cheating, and, and you're my friend. Claude, do it for a friend. Well, uh, what do you think, Daisy? Uh, you know what this is going to mean for us, Daisy. I, I think I do, Claude. And I think you're very lucky to have such a good friend as little Joe. Uh, you still got my deed you're keeping for me? I'll get it right away. Hey, I got $600. <laughs> oh, well, what's the matter, Clancy? Well, uh, no, nothing, Claude. It isn't that I'm insensitive to your good fortune. Uh, I mean, it means nothing for myself, as far as I mean, you understand. But Tar, Tarbush, he was wondering what it would feel like just to touch that much money. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, all at one time. <laughs> would you mind, Claude? Sure, go ahead, touch it. It's only money. <laughs> Well, what's the matter with you? You scared or something? Yeah, no, don't feel anything like I thought it would. You know, I broke my neck digging for the last ten years, and I don't think in all that time I've taken out half as much as this. And now I have it in the palm of my hand, all in one lump. Congratulations, Claude. Come on, Tarbush. We better get back to Box Canyon. We can start digging again tomorrow. Oh, wait. You're not leaving on an empty stomach. Not when I just come in to $600. Oh, oh, da oh Daisy, I'm starved. How about shooting the works for me and my friends here? Well, of course, Claude. <laughs> but business before pleasure, here's your deed. There you are, little Joe, all proper and legal. <laughs> uh, now, boys, what about that party? It's all on me. Steak, champagne, anything you want. Besides, you fellas haven't had a decent meal in months. Now, wait a minute. I don't know about that, Claude. Uh, maybe Tarbush and I don't go in for that fancy steak and champagne stuff, but, but at least we eat regular. Yeah, that's right. What's got into you fellas, huh? I mean, here I am wanting to celebrate. I mean... I give a little party for my friends, and, and you two go and get sore. Ah, fine friend you are. Treating us like charity cases. But who do you think you are anyway? You of all people. Something even the Indians didn't want. Wouldn't even scalp. Yeah, wouldn't even scalp. Come on, Tarbush, let's get out of here. I'm sorry. Come on, Claude, you got nothing to be sorry about. They're just envious of you, Claude. No, it's my fault. And I don't blame them either. Little Joe, I want you to do me a favor. I've heard that before. I want you to buy up those mining claims of theirs in Box Canyon. What? Why? I want to share my fortune with my friends. Now, let's see, uh, $200 a piece. Uh, that makes it equal all around. Yeah, but Claude, I'm... If you won't do this for me, then our deal's off, Little Joe. And you can have your money back. Guess you better do as he says, little Joe. Claude has such a generous nature. Claude, what? Yeah. Now, mind you. I ain't concerned with what you've done last night. It's what you didn't do this morning. 
I had to get up a whole hour early just to do my chores and yours. And I might add that Paul's fit to be tied. Mm. How are your eggs, Hoss? Good, real good. Yeah. Can I get you a third helping, Hoss? No, thank you, ma'am. This is my second breakfast this morning already, anyhow. Better than first one, too. Don't you tell Hop saying I said that to you. <laughs> Paul sent me in to fetch you, and that's what I'm going to do. Oh, fine, huh? I come peaceable. I guess we got to stop off and buy a couple of mining claims in Box Canyon. We got a what? Well, no, 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 not we exactly. You. Yes, it wouldn't look right if I did it, because I just got done buying Claude Miller's place yesterday. Joe, Paul's right. You're plumb out of your mind. Oh, finish your eggs, they're going to get cold. I don't want no more eggs. I ain't got no appetite. Well, all right, let, listen, here's where you come in. Joe, this is where I get out. Joe, this, this Claude Miller has done, he's done idle your brain. What are you doing hanging around with a no-account little guy like him for, anyhow? Yeah, well, look who's talking, a big softie who picks up every stray from Virginia City to the Klondike. Don't change the subject. Now, come on, let's get going. All right. All right. Of course, I'd hate to have to tell Pa what happened to that $100 bonus you got for cutting timber last time. How'd you know about that? You know, Pa thinks that money's in the bank. I guess I'm the only one who does know where it really is. In the hip pocket of that funny little man with the gold-making machine. Exactly whereabouts are these mine claims that you want to go look at? You want to buy what? You know, if you cartwrights keep this up, you're going to land in the loony bin. Well, uh, I'll tell you, Clancy, it's just that I, well, I sort of got a hankering to buy this in the Box Canyon, that's all. Why? Why? Because it's... I don't know, it's... Just sort of, well, it's got a, it looks like a, looks like exactly what it is, don't it? A piece of junk. Junk? Junk. Junk, he says. <laughs> if it's junk you're after, you ought to take a look at what your little brother bought yesterday. Yeah, it ain't worth a hill of beans. Nothing but cactus and sand. Yeah, well, I, I'll tell you, you talk me into it. I'll, I'll give you $200 a piece for it. Only 200 Your brother paid Claude Miller 600 for his place. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, that's my last offer. You can take it or leave it. Well, now, uh, it, it isn't worth it, but we'll take it. <laughs> you know, now it's mine, it feels better. <laughs> oh, uh, host. Ain't you gonna need the deed to them claims? Yeah, ain't you gonna need the deed to them claims? That burn if I don't at that. Well, I got them here in a safe place. Yeah. That's where you've been. I've been looking all over for you. Well, I've been around, buying up some mining claims and such. You mean you fellas finally sold your mining claims? <laughs> Claude, there's one going every minute. We got us a Cartwright, just like you did yesterday. <laughs> I hope you're satisfied, little brother. What about these here tools? Tools? Who cares about tools in a time like this? Throw them away! <laughs> it's all right, Claude. What are we going to do about this dynamite? Dynamite? I think we'd better bury it. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Don't bury it. I've got a better idea. Let's show the rest of the world what we really think of this stinking, uh, <clears throat> this Garden of Eden. Follow me. I wonder what Claude dropped now. Sure is a ruckus, didn't we, boys? <laughs> I hear it. Tabash, Claude. You see what I see? 
Would you look? on the width of your vein, of course. Hard to tell proper from just one chunk. One? Well, there's dozens of them out there. That's right. There are dozens of them out there. Uh, some of them too big to carry. Then if this assay is out the way I think it should, you boys got to strike uh, pretty near as big as the Comstock load. Uh, Comstock com load. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. We don't own that property no more. Well, wait, 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 what? We, we, we don't sell them claims to him. To, 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 to him? Why, you swindling son of a stuffed monkey, I, why, I'll drive your feet up behind your ears, you big baboon! Oh, I've been landed on an uppercut when I was young, but I can't see the reason. Oh, Clancy, Clancy, stop it! Ah, where are you? It wasn't him, it was me! Horse just made the deal. I bought the mine. You! You, why, you sneaking, double crossing little weasel all straight! Uh, you know why, I but just... Clancy! You know why he bought it? So he could share his good fortune with two friends who wouldn't even sit down and have dinner with him. Not that I blamed you for it. I understood. I mean, your pride and all. The only way I could think of to share my money with you was to buy your claims. I could never run a thing as big as this all by myself. Why, oh, you know I'll cut you in, fellas. After all, I'm the owner. I mean, I own it all. I own it all. I love you. Will you marry me? Oh, Claude! <laughs> but first, we'll have to measure the streets. Measure the streets? For what? For a red carpet for my queen on our wedding day. Oh! <laughs> well, good morning, Miss Daisy. Oh, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. How are you? Hello, little Joe. Oh, I must have missed today, Daisy. You look like Sunday. <laughs> That's just how I feel. Claude's coming back today. Coming back? I didn't know the Silver Baron was out of town. Oh, yes, he went down to San Francisco, ordering machinery and Lord knows what all. Oh, uh, well, Daisy, I've uh, sort of been expecting an invitation for the big event. <laughs> we haven't set the date yet, Claude being so busy. He took Clancy and Tarbish with him. Well, don't put that date off too long. We haven't had a good party here since last Saturday night. <laughs> oh, my gracious. Excuse me. And the meek shall inherit the earth. Is that Claude Miller? Daisy! <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, say, send me that bill for ten out of cattle, will you? And, oh, uh, Ben, if you ever need anything in the way of money, call on me.
everybody ridiculing him. Wish people wouldn't do that. Well, I guess the harder they laugh at him, the, the more they forget their own foolishness. Well, Daisy will take good care of him. You better get back. Got a lot of work to do at the ranch, and you've got to help Adam and Carson City with those yearlings. Right. It didn't get ripped at all, Claw. All it needs is a good brushing. Mr. Miller? Hmm? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a minute. A little something for your trouble. No, no, no trouble at all. My pleasure. Oh. Guess they're still laughing at me. You know, you don't have to put up with that sort of thing anymore, Mr. Miller. You can buy them and sell them. list, Thompson. Why, you little worm. I'll break you in two. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slauson. I won't forget that. Uh, say, uh, how much does the sheriff pay you a day? Two dollars a day and meals. I'll give you five if you come to work for me. Uh, naturally, I'd expect you to protect my interests, and and there would be some paperwork, so uh, so let's make it six dollars. How does that strike you? You're the boss, Mr. Miller. Thunder's going on around here. 
Your little friend, Mr. Miller, bought up all the mortgages from the bank, that's what. By that little son of a gun. Mr. Miller, I hate to bother you with these small details, but I need your signature on these papers. Oh, of course, of course. It's nothing that needs reading, Mr. Miller. It's just invoices for that new equipment. Oh, oh, well, if, if that's all, yes. I'd better get those supplies ready. Pa needs that coal oil in a hurry. Right away. Uh, there's one more, Miss Miller. Oh. Little Joe? Little Joe? Where have you been keeping yourself? Hey, Claude, how you doing? <laughs> Fine. Well, I haven't seen you in a long time. I didn't know you had such a head for business. You made a lot of changes around here, a lot of changes. Well, I guess I have branched out some. Uh-huh, say. Hey, you mind? Go ahead. Thank you. Mm -mm. Hey, what about the mine? Doesn't that keep you pretty busy? The mine? Oh, oh yes, the mine. Oh, oh, silver pouring out just like I figured. Thousands of dollars a day. Or is it a week? Well, uh, well, ex uh, Slauson's got the exact figures. Slauson? Mm-hmm. He's working for me now. It's more than I can handle by myself. I see. Hey, what about you and Daisy? You set the date yet? Daisy? Uh, well, no, not yet. Uh, we, uh, uh... <laughs> well, I gotta be going. Lots of things to attend to. Good to see you, little Joe. Good to see you, Claude. Miller. Oh, something I can do for you, Harvey? Do for me? You've done it. You've ruined me. You've got my home, my farm, everything. Everything except this. One dollar. Now you get out and you pick that up. You put it in your pocket. So you'll have everything I got before I kill you. Pulled a gun on Mr. Miller here. But he didn't know what he was doing. He'd been drinking. He pulled a gun. He wouldn't have used it. How do you know that? I guess you're right. I don't. Mr. Miller, I just saved your life. Daisy, I came as soon as I got your message. Little Joe. He killed him. That's awesome. I know, Daisy, I heard. There, there, now. Come on, sit over here. But it wasn't his fault. Claude wouldn't knowingly hurt a gnat. You know that. Well, I thought I knew that, Daisy, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> big man now, a lot of power. I think I have a mind to tell him where that $600 came from that started all this. Little Joe, if you do that, why, I, I'll... You mean after all this, you still love the guy? Yes, little Joe. I still love him. I just wish there was something we could do. Daisy, why don't you run out on him? Come on out to the ranch, spend some time there. Maybe he'll come to his senses. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why, if I left Claude now, why, that Slauson, he'd, he'd gobble him up whole. Don't you think he's done that already? Oh, uh, Daisy. Little Joe, what are you doing back in town? I heard about Harvey. Oh, terrible, wasn't it? Imagine. Nice, quiet fellow like Harvey. 
going clean out of his mind like that. Why, he was going to shoot me. Claude, you don't really believe that, do you? If it hadn't been for Slauson, he might have. Slauson? Why, Claude, don't you see what he's done to you? Well, he saved my life, and he's been very helpful. Oh, Clancy, Tarbosh, what are you doing back here? Clancy, Tarbosh, what are you doing back yeah, here? Yeah, Clancy, Tarbosh. What are you doing back here? Will you listen to him? Without shame and with a smile of Satan on his sweet little innocent face. Yep, that's right. Here we hear such perfidy in the sinful history of mankind. You know, if he'd just come right out and cut our throats, I, I'd have some respect for him. But no, with prevaricating guile, he defrauds his benefactors, then he leaves them to die way out of the end of nowhere. But what did I do, Clancy? What did you do? Why, you black-hearted, two-faced, faithless ghost of a bug? I'll squash hey, you. Clancy, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's this all about now? <sighs> you heard him yourself, little Joe. After stealing Box Canyon from us, he said he'd cut us in. Well, he cut us in, all right. He cut us in little pieces. Yeah, right in little pieces. And then he left us in San Francisco and didn't send us the money like he promised he would. Right. Now, now, what's that? Uh, Mr. Miller, I'll take care of this. Oh, and just who are you to butt in on a discussion with friends? I mean, former friends. Mr. Slauson works for me. Oh, he does, does he? Well, in that case, he works for us, too. You see, we happen to be his partners in Box Canyon. You have signed papers? Signed papers? Well, we got Claude's word. Or... There's a little more of your prevaricating guile. Well, you wouldn't understand. Uh, this is business. Oh, of course, I expect to take care of you boys. Uh, uh, Slauson, make a note. Remind me to arrange for a regular stipend. Stipend? A stipend? Why, you withering scum of a beetle and I get... All right, all right. What's the use, Clancy? All right. Come on, Tarbosh. Let's get out of here. You know what you are? You're contaminating. That's what you are, contaminating. Now I know why the Indians wouldn't even bother with you. Yes. Claude, how can you do that? Those men are your friends. I thought I'd seen everything. There. There, you see? Now you're picking on me. I'll thank you, little Joe, to mind your own affairs. All right, little Joe. I'm ready. Where are you going, Daisy? She's going with me, and that's my affair. Now, Daisy. Daisy, you can't do this. Well, well, I'll show them. And incidentally, Slauson, I got a couple things to take up with you. Such as? What did Harvey mean about me ruining him? All we did was lend him enough money so he could pay off his mortgage. That's right. Had 30% interest. 30%? I never did. Why, that's crooked. You signed the papers. I did? You signed a lot of papers. Including power of attorney for me. Power of, of attorney? Why, you can't do that, Slauson. I already have. You're working for me. I own the mine. Did you really think I was going to work for six dollars a day and meals? That power of attorney. That doesn't mean a thing. I think it does. And this is going to make sure it does. <laughs> Now, that thing with Winter Summer's farm, that's Slauson. It's got nothing to do with Claude. Hold it! Now, you. How did Claude Miller get to own a rich silver mine? Oh, well, that's a long, involved story. I'm in no mood for involved stories. Did Claude Miller buy that mine? If so, with what? Well, I actually hoss bought it. You bought it? Yes, sir. I bought it from Clancy and Tarbosh. Actually, Mr. Cartwright, Hoss bought it from them for Claude. That's right. For $400. $400. Now, where did Claude Miller get $400? Uh, from me. You gave Claude Miller $400. No, Paul, no. not exactly. Little Joe gave him $600. $600? Why? And for what? Uh, well, uh, for, the, for that piece of land. Uh, Ah, that's it. That's what? Daisy, that's it. That piece of land in Box Canyon. What if they couldn't get at it? What if they couldn't get at what and who? Pa, I'm going to make Claude Miller regret he ever sold me that land in Box Canyon.
Get your hat, Miller. We're going out the box canyon. I think I'll stay here if you don't mind. I've got some business I'd like to attend to. The only business you've got is out at Box Canyon. And there won't be any business if they finish that fence they started. Who, who's building a fence? Your friends, the Cartwrights. Now, come on. Tell him to tear down that fence. Mr. Cartwright, uh, little Joe, uh, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Build a fence, Claude. But, but, but you can't do that. Oh, yes, we can. I bought this property from you for $600, remember? Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, he did. I forgot all about that. You know what this means. This is the only access to those mines. Can't get that ore out of there any other way. So buy it back from him. Mr. Cartwright, um, well, if I can't get that silver out, well, uh, that'll put me in an awful squeeze. Seems to me, Claw, that you've been putting quite a few people in a squeeze lately. I know, and, and I'm very sorry about that, but... Uh, uh, there isn't much I can do about that. I don't like to disagree with you, Claude, but I think there's something you can do. First off, you can stop monkeying around with mortgages. Cancel the unfair loans. No more 30 percent, no more foreclosures. Now, if you'll comply with all these conditions, Claude, we may, not just may, mind you, tear down this fence. Oh, sure, sure, little Joe. First thing you do is get rid of him. You mean... Uh... Get on back to work. Joe, grab that end down there. No, no, wait, wait, please. I have to do it. Uh, you see, don't you, Mr. Slauson? Slauson, you're fired. <laughs> Claude, didn't mean to be so rough on you. We didn't want to have to stomp on you, Claude. If you want to buy this property back, you can do it any time. Oh, no, sir. You keep it, little Joe, just in case I get out of line again. All right, I will. Listen, I think I better go back in town with you, too. You mean Slauson? Well, thanks all the same, little Joe, but I got on my own two feet at last, and, and it's a darn good feeling. Now I think I'd like to try and walk a little. <laughs> saying I told you you're fired well, did you hear me you're, you're fired you've got a gun pick it up and say that again you're fired you heard what he said, Slauson.
I'll tell you, Pa, I sure thank him, little Joe. Well, he would like to come out here and say goodbye himself, Mr. Durer, but he had to go into town, some kind of a big meeting at Mr. Oliver's. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to seem the same around here without you running the place. Well, maybe the fellow I sold out to get along better than me. Maybe he'll be willing to knuckle under. Knuckle under to who? Sladen. Boss Sladen. And his bully boy, Gus Hanna. Me, I'm, uh, I'm not the knuckling kind. Sladen? Is he been bothering you? Yeah. He's been giving me plenty of bother. Seems Sladen has taken us businessmen one at a time. You pay what he asks or else. I can hardly believe that, but... Well, my pa started Sladen in the freighting yeah. business. Slade and his daughter are real good friends of ours. Yeah, real good friends of yours, little Joe. You'd be surprised how much that's helped Sladen and what he's trying to do. Just take that load right back where you got it. What are you talking about, Gus? You know better than to try any hauling. Your old man's got a contract with Washo Freight. I'm not hauling freight. I'm doing ranch chores. This ain't Ponderosa land. It's a public road, and that makes it Slayton's territory. Slayton's territory? You must be out of your mind. You can't stop me from using a public road. Well, we're doing it, ain't we? You're going to get out of my way. talk about Tom Slayton. Oh, is that the only way we can talk, behind closed doors? <laughs> Just how well do you know Slayton, Ben? How well do I know him? Well, I know what things were like before he got here. We had three freight lines that were broken down. Half our supplies never got through, and the road agents were stealing his blind. And now Slayton's stealing his blind. You know the way he's jacked up his rates. If this keeps up, we'll all go bankrupt. Well, didn't anyone talk to him or try to reason with him? Yeah, Bill Haney did. And the next night, his store was burned down real mysterious-like. Now, hold on. You're not saying Tom Slayton did that? It's the same thing. He got Gus Hannon and his bully boys to do the job for him. Slayton sits back while they do the rough stuff. Now, like we said, you're the one that brought him here. So we want you to talk to him. We don't want the same thing to happen to us that happened to Bill Haney. Yeah, sure. Of course, I'll talk to him. Uh, only one thing. Um, just leave our names out of it.
Well, no bad. Sorry to keep you waiting, but I just heard you were here. Tom? Yes, we just got off the stage. Who was that? My daughter, Karen. Oh, she finished school in San Francisco? No, she quit. Yeah, I finally managed to get her into the best school in the West, and then she decides she'd rather be here with me. And I don't know whether to be mad or flattered. Oh, I imagine you're more flattered than you are mad. <laughs> well, maybe. You know how it is. You've got sons. Well, it could be three years of school is enough for a girl. Maybe she ought to learn how life is outside the books, huh? That depends on how life is outside the books. What do you want to see me about, Ben? Tom, what are you trying to do to this town? Somebody complaining? Maybe. I raised my rates to meet rising costs, Ben. Tom, you didn't raise my rates. Well, you're a friend of mine. Besides, you're responsible for my being here. Anyway, Sam Dura was talking about bringing in another freight line. And you wouldn't let him? I couldn't let him. If I allowed him to do that, others would want to do the same. There'd be a lot of little freight companies cutting each other's throats. You can't have that. Oh, I see. No competition, is that it? Oh, come on now, my friend. You understand it perfectly well. How did you build the Ponderosa? A lot of hard work and sweat, Tom. And you didn't have to worry about competition. I do. Well, of course I had to worry about competition. I still do. Oh, Ben, what's the sense of arguing? Ranching is an entirely different business. Look at this. Let me show you something. This is the greatest invention since the world began. The wheel. This is my business. Over here, Ben, is Washoe's operation. Right here. It's a scratch on the surface at the moment. But transportation's going to be the lifeblood of this country. And I'm going to control it. And how many more places like Bill Haney's are going to have to burn down before you control it? I don't understand your question, Ben. Don't you? Now, look. I've got one daughter. And I want to do for her just what you're doing for your sons. I want her to have a heritage. Heritage? It's a funny thing, Tom. We use the same words, but we mean different things. Oh, Paul. Uh oh, I'm glad you're here. Just coming in after you. Oh, what's the matter? Who's inside? It's the doc. You better come on in. Little Joe's been hurt. What happened? Well, he got shot in the shoulder. How was he? Not as bad as he could have been. The wound is clean. He's lost a lot of blood. He's weak. Well, young fella. Fine. Bringing that wagon load of lumber back from Duras. Some of Sladen's men tried to stop me. I was a shot. And next thing I remember, I was here. Doc, what do you think? A few days of rest, he'll begin to recover nicely. Would you, uh, would you help Hoss get him upstairs, make him comfortable? Certainly. Paul. Where are you going? I'm going into town to see Sladen. Don't you want me to go with you? No, without him away, you better stay here and take care of Joe. Is he here? Yeah, he's coming in now. Expecting you. Come on in. Can I give you a drink? You can give me an explanation, Tom. I'll explain. The kid asked for it. We stopped to talk and he made a stupid move for his gun. 
It's funny. My son never mentioned anything about that. Well, he probably just forgot about it. That's understandable. How is the boy? Now, what was it you wanted to talk about? He was hauling stuff. The boss gave orders that nobody's allowed to do that. I gave public notice that Washoe was going to protect its own interests. I was like I told you this morning, no competition, Ben. Your kid was hauling timber in direct violation of your contract with me. We no longer have a contract, Tom. It's canceled as of right now. Well, of course, that's your privilege, Ben. But if you do that, you better know that not a wheel is going to move onto the Ponderosa or off of it. And if you want to make a fight over this, I think our freighters can match your cowboys any time. You want to make a fight over this, don't you? Don't you? I'm not avoiding it. Now, I told you that shooting was an accident. If you want to make something more of it, you do so at your own risk. Beat me, beat them all. Now, Ben, give in to you, give in to them all. You admit he was acting under your orders? I'm the boss. I guess that makes you responsible for his actions, then. I guess it does, Ben. Mr. Cartwright, goodness, it's good to see you. How are you, Karen? How are the boys? How's little Joe? Maybe you'd better ask your father. What's wrong, Dad? What did he mean by that? Oh, nothing. It's just a small business disagreement between Ben and me, that's all. I want you to know my foreman, Karen Gus Hanna. How do you do, miss? Hello. Well, I'd better check the warehouse. I, uh... I hope you like it here, miss. Thank you. Well, it's pretty flowers. Picked them for me, I hope, huh? Yes, Daddy, I did. Daddy, I bought Mr. Cartwright. Oh, no, no, that's just a misunderstanding. That's all that is. It's just... Well, as a matter of fact, uh, this fellow Hannah, he accidentally shot little Joe this morning. Shot him? I don't get excited. It was just an accident. He's going to be all right. Ben got a little upset about it, naturally. I should imagine he would be. I'll go out to the Ponderosa right away and see little Joe. Oh, now, wait a minute, Karen. I wish you wouldn't do that. Why not? Well, just let him calm down for a few days. I mean, Ben will realize that this thing's just an accident, but in the meantime, you know... I'll tell you what, come on with me. I'll take you over to the hotel and buy you the finest dinner in town. You know, they stock my own private kitchen over there nowadays. Obstructing a public road, invasion of privacy, assault with a deadly weapon. That's quite a list, Ben. I hope you're not questioning any part of it. I'm only questioning how you're going to make out. You know, with all his toughness, Sladen is a... Careful, smooth operator. The first time anyone has made a complaint against him? Oh, I've had words. Words here and words there. But this is the first official complaint I've had up till now. I'm a lawman. And I can't go around arresting people like Sladen and Gus Hanna simply because they talk tough. And I can't protect people who are afraid of words. Well, Bill Haney got more than words. When Bill Haney's place burned down, there were no witnesses. I might add, I can't keep a man in jail indefinitely on suspicion, either. You've got more than just suspicion. Just fill out that complaint now, Ed, and I'll serve it on Tom Sladen personally. Serving warrants is my job, Ben. Ah, oh, hello, Sheriff. Give me a glass, Gus. No, thanks. I've got a warrant for your arrest. Well, what's the charge? Cartwright, 
Yeah. So he went belly aching to the law. I thought he had more fight in him. He's passing the buck to you. Ben Cartwright never ran away from trouble in his life. I just don't need him to help me do my job. Well, the prospect of my being thrown into jail seems to please everybody. We didn't say that, Mr. Slayton. Yeah, but you all kind of like the idea anyway, don't you? Cartwright was only exercising his legal rights. Shouldn't condemn a man for that. After all, his son was shot. Well, at least I know how you all feel. Yeah, all right, Sheriff. Here you are. You can post bond as soon as I telegraph Judge Meisner in Carson City and find out how much. I don't bother about the bond. The next session of the circuit court is six weeks off. Yeah, I know it. You don't figure on staying in jail till then, do you? Sure, why not? Some good. I get a little rest. <laughs> uh, you just tell Karen where I am, but uh, don't scare her, yeah? It's your boss. I'll take care of it. Well, come on, let's go. All right, gents. I got a hundred dollars here that says Washo over the Ponderosa. Any takers? I didn't think so. Slayton can't do that, can he, Sheriff? How are you gonna stop? Man's got a right to do what he wants to do with his own business. I haven't laid in the winter goods yet. If snow comes before I get stocked up, I'm ruined. Yeah, and so am I. And so are all these other men here. You're the sheriff. Can't you force him to open up again? How? Oh. But I'll tell you what, Mr. Oliver. You figure out a legal way to do it, and we'll talk about it. Sheriff? I've got to see my father. Can you take me to him? Sure enough. You should see them out there, Father. They're all gathered in little groups. They stopped talking when I came by. They seem awfully unhappy. Well, that's fine. That's just the way I want them to be. But why? I don't understand. Well, you chose to leave school and come home here to me. Now, you've got to understand that life here doesn't always work according to the books. But I thought these people were your friends. I've got customers, Karen. I can't afford friends. Does that include the Cartwrights? It was Mr. Cartwright who helped you get started here. He's always been fine, decent. Don't talk to me about fine and decent. You just think of those fine, decent people I worked for in Omaha. Superintendent for Overland Freight. Working 18 hours a day, making them rich and scraping a living for you and your mother. Your mother. When she died, I had to borrow the money to bury her. We've been happy here, Father. I'd hate to see anything change it. Well, you won't. That I promise you. I'm building something here for you, just the way Cartwright is for his sons. And he better not try to stop me. All right. I think you better uh, go on back to the hotel. Tell Gus I said to give you whatever money you need for, you know. I'm going out to the Ponderosa. I think that both you and Mr. Cartwright lost your tempers. And, well, maybe a third party can help straighten things out. I don't want you to do that, Karen. Please don't say that, Daddy. Because I'm going to go. I want to talk to little Joe and to Mr. Cartwright. I don't want to give them the chance to knife me when they've got you out there alone, you understand? You're wrong. And I'll prove it to you. Well, I can hardly hog tie you here, can I?
Come in. Karen. Little Joe. Pa told me you were back. Oh, it's sure good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Hey, come on in. It's been a long time. I'm sorry about that. My father told me how it happened. He did? That's really why I came out today to see you and to talk to your father about this whole mess. Karen, you said your father told you about this. Just what did he say? He said that he and your father had had a disagreement about a freight hauling contract and rate schedules and things. And what about this? I think he said that Gus had shot you, but that it was an accident. And you believe that? Isn't it true? No. No, it's not true. He shot me deliberately. That isn't what my father said. Well, Karen, I know you love your father, but... Well, Karen. I saw your rig outside. I thought, what for you? Mr. Cartwright, I came over here to ask you to withdraw your charges against my father and let him out of jail. Well, Karen, I can't do that. Karen, listen to me. I don't want to hurt you. We've been too good friends for that. But as far as your father is concerned, I... Joseph, that'll be enough. I think it is. Daddy said you'd probably try to knife him as soon as you got me alone. Why, you should let me tell her the truth. Joe. She loves her father. Anyway. A quarrel isn't with her. Where? Oliver? All right, Tom. Ben? Hello, Ben. Well. Ben, we just got to talk to you about this new situation in town. Well, what situation is that? Sladen's shut down operations drum tight. Yeah, nothing's coming in or out. When that word got around, you can guess what happened. Panic buying. Our shelves are almost bare. Yeah, Sladen's trying to get me to withdraw my complaint, huh? You've got to do it, Ben. Now, wait a minute. You boys asked me to try to stop Sladen. I know, Ben, but we can't hold out a week, let alone till his trial comes up. If the snow has come early, Ben, we're finished. What about, what about Carson City? There are freighters there that can haul in your supplies? Well, none of them dare come in here, Ben. They wouldn't dare buck Washoe. Well, we got horses and wagons here. All you need, you can haul in the supplies yourselves. That's no solution. Hannah and his men would cut us to ribbons. You've got to give in to them, Ben. Sure. And the next time we want more and still more. All right, Ben. Tom Slayton, if I could. Sure. He's sitting in there, grinning like the tomcat that swallowed the dicky bird. Oh. Ben, I've seen that grin before on fellows that thought they had to drop on me.
Well, hello, Ben. Nice of you to visit me. Why are you taking it out on the town, Tom? <laughs> That's a funny question with me here in the town jail. You knew very well, didn't you, that when you suspended operations, you'd set off a buying panic? I do what I have to do. Just as long as it goes your way. All right, what are your terms? You think a lot of this town, don't you? What are your terms? All right, I'll tell you. You're going to help me, Ben. You're going to withdraw your complaint against me and re-sign your contract with me, publicly. Who do you think you are? I thought that was pretty plain. I'm the boss. Ben. Just got a telegraph. It seems that Oliver and some of the merchants got a little impatient. What does that mean? They appealed to the governor. He's sending Judge Meisner down here to hold a special session of court. He'll hear the case tomorrow. Well, maybe the judge's trip won't be necessary. You've got something to say to the sheriff, haven't you, Ben? Sheriff? I'll be with you to meet the judge in the morning when he arrives on the stage. Ben! Don't be foolish. You're not going to get any help from those chicken-livered friends of yours. You fight me, you fight alone. I'm sorry about all this. Sorry? How can you say that after the way you just testified? You and Dora and your father are trying to put my father in prison. All we're doing is telling the truth. The boss won it! He won it! He won it so easy that jury wasn't out two minutes. I knew he'd win! You know there's going to be a party There was never any doubt my mind. The jury couldn't have been out over, over a couple of minutes. Boy, Sean, they're really going to be feeling the roads now. Verdict. Not a surprising one. Yeah, we tried to do what was best for the town, Ben. Besides, it could have happened like Gus said. All he did was shoot in self defense. You sure showed them all where to head in, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Look who's here. Why, it's Mr. Oliver, the foreman of the jury. Have a drink, Mr. Oliver. Mr. Slade and the other merchants have asked me to speak to you. Naturally. They want to know when the wheels are going to start rolling again, huh? That's right. We'd like to know when you're going to renew operation. Yeah. <laughs> Gus, take the boys over to the saloon. Keep the party rolling. Mr. Oliver and I have some business to discuss. Okay, fellas, over to the saloon. The boss is back. Right. <laughs> well, Oliver, to answer your question, the 
wheels are going to start rolling as soon as you sign your new contracts. New contracts? That's right. During my recent incarceration, I took the time to work out a new contract with Sierra Freighting Company. I'm now going to be able to provide a freighting service from Omaha clear to the coast. Well, that's fine, Mr. Sladen, but the, the rates, they'll be the same. No, be a slight increase. We can't stand another increase. It'll drive us out of business. Oh, come on, Oliver. Keep your voice down. Let's discuss this thing like businessmen, huh? Go on, boys. Howdy, Miss Karen. The boys are celebrating your daddy's acquittal. Where is my father, guys? Oh, he's over to the office. But I wouldn't interrupt him right now, honey. You see, he's talking important business. And you know your daddy. There's nothing more important than business. Well, I'm going to take him away from his business. We're going to celebrate. Well, honey, look, why don't you and I celebrate? You see, we ought to get to know each other better anyway. Come on, we'll have something to drink. Besides, your daddy's busy with Mr. Oliver anyway. No, thanks, Gus. I don't drink. Besides, I want to see Mr. Oliver. I haven't even thanked him for voting for my father's acquittal. <laughs> thanked him? He didn't do it for thanks. What did you mean? Didn't do it for thanks. Oh, now, you just forget it. Don't you worry your pretty little head about that. You're trying to tell me there was something wrong with the way my father was acquitted? Oh, now, look, honey. Oliver's just like everybody else in this town. They want to live. What the Cartwright said in court, and Mr. Dura, what they said is true. This town is afraid of my father. Oh, now, honey, you shouldn't worry your pretty head about things like that. When your daddy and I get through, we're going to. Hey! Now, what's the sense of arguing? But do what I tell you. Take the increases and pass them on to your customers. They wouldn't hold still for it any more than we will. Well, they have no say in the matter. You and any of them. Ben was right. You'll never be satisfied. You want more and more. I want everything the market will bear. Well, this time you've gone too far. Oh, really? Who do you think you're talking to? I could break you the way I break that match. I'm running this town, and don't you forget it. We need to. We'll appeal to the territorial governor for help. Well, go ahead and appeal to him. What's he going to do? Send a lot of troops down here to smash perfectly valid contracts between you and Washoe Freight Lines? Now, use your head. Go over there and sign those contracts on the dotted line. We'll open this town if we have to draw freight ourselves. Oh, don't try anything like that, Oliver. Didn't you learn anything from what happened to Sumner and Haney and Dura, huh? Like what happened to little Joe Cartwright, is that what you mean? I mean Gus Hanna's a pretty fair shot. And the next time somebody gets it, it's not going to be in the shoulder. <laughs> Oh, come in, come in, come in. I was just going over to the hotel to get you. I promised you a little celebration, didn't I? I heard what you said about little Joe. Is murder part of your business, too? No, you listen to me. Little Joe wasn't killed. Oh, I had to teach this town a lesson. If it could happen to the Cartwrights, it could happen to anybody, you understand? Who do you think you are? A master with slaves? Don't you talk to me that way. Don't you criticize me. Criticize? Do you know why I really quit school, Father? Because all the other girls were saying the very things I just said. Oh, yes. They call you Boss Slade in there, too. Only I wouldn't believe them. I said it wasn't true. I defended you. And then I came home to find out it was all true. Go back over to that hotel. You never should have left school in San Francisco. You're wrong, Father. No school in the world could have taught me what I just learned from you. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Oliver. 
And? Bennett Slater. He's raised his rates 50%. What? 50%. And if we don't give in to him, he's going to starve us out. The sheriff has gone to the territorial capital to try to get help from the governor. But in the meantime, panic has already started. Panic? There's not enough food. What do you mean? I, there was a run of the shops. I thought everybody stocked up. Some did, and some weren't able to. It's big trouble, Ben. You know how long it takes to get help in from the territory. Yes, I know, I know. Well, let's not us panic. Well, the Ponderosa could supply enough food for the town. Slayton won't let us get away with it. It could mean a fight. All right. Oliver, you go back into town. Quietly round up some men. Meanwhile, I'll have my boys butcher some beeves. And by tomorrow noon, we should have a wagon load ready to roll into town. Now, do you think you could be back with your men by then? Right. Ben, I'm sorry about the trial this morning. We were a bunch of frightened men. Oh, that was this morning. You coming, Miss Karen? May I stay here, Mr. Cartwright? I have no place else to go. Well, of course, of course. Karen, have a look, see if Mr. Oliver's coming in. He said he'll be here by noon. Yeah. Paul, what if he can't get uh, the town folks to come out with him? Then what are we going to do? Well, if we go along, Slayton will have us outnumbered. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I vote we go. If we don't go, Slayton's going to win without even trying, ain't he? That's the way I feel, too. Not you, Joe. You ain't got but one good arm. I shoot with my left, and that one's fine, big brother. I'm going. Anybody interested in my vote? Well, frankly, we didn't think it was necessary, Paul. You're right. Let's go. Here he comes. Well, with the others. Slayton knows your plans, Ben. Gus Hannon and his men have been all over town threatening people. And they all back down? Most of them did, but there's a few of them beside me that are with you. Where are they? They had to sneak out of town one by one. We figured it was better that way. They're going to meet us at Wild Horse Canyon. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's go. Take care of things here now. See you, son. I guess you could use another hand, huh? Didn't expect you back till tonight. We're having kind of an interesting time. Yeah. I heard what was going on. Got back as soon as I could. Right back of the wagon. Give this team a little breather. This grade's pretty steep for this heavy load. Mike, 
Go up around those rocks and cover them from the other side. Right. Adam, keep your eye on that rock overhang. Boss, that clump of trees. We're not gonna let you get through, Ben. Turn back. They got Mike. It's no use, Ben. We've got you outnumbered up here. Now I want you to go back, that's all. Now will you do it, yes or no? Ben? Listen to me, Ben. I don't want to kill you. But if you force me to do it, I'm going to do it. As far as this town's concerned, it could have been done by anybody. Engines or marauders or anybody. There'll be no witnesses. I'll be a witness. Karen! Come over here! No, Father. I want to watch you commit murder. She's thrown in with them. She thinks more of the Cartwrights than she does of you. Karen, this is your father talking to you! No, it isn't. It's Boss Sladen. Karen! Get down! Stay under cover! No, Mr. Cartwright. If he kills any of you, he'll have to kill me, too. I'm coming down to you. Stay down! Karen! You ain't going nowhere! Here's your chance, Tom. Go ahead, use your gun. Here's your chance to kill every one of us. Karen, too, anyone who stands in your way. Well, Karen, I... I never know what to say seeing you off. That's all right, Father. You don't have to say anything. You go back to school and finish what you started. You got a lot of things left to learn, you know. Yeah, well, I... Uh, I guess that's true of everybody, isn't it? Karen, came to say goodbye. I almost wish I hadn't agreed to go back to school. Why, the year will be over before you know it. And you'll be Virginia City's first woman college graduate. Well, they're waiting. Better get aboard. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Have a nice trip.
Well, Tom. Well, Ben, I guess I got a lot of things to do. A lot of things to straighten out. I don't know where to start. I guess the best place might be down the sheriff's office, huh? I'll walk down with you. that new saddle. It took us all this time to find it and all that junk he's got over there. That's Paul's birthday saddle? Yeah, you coming to the surprise party? Yeah, yeah, I already invited him, but if you keep yapping about it all over town, it isn't gonna be a surprise. Oh, I don't I, I ain't told but 20 or 30 people. <laughs> all right, Mario, you wait here. Huh? First, they're gonna find a job. And then we go look for a room. Papa, maybe I can play the guitar. Oh, no. No, no, no. Someday you're going to play the guitar and rate the concert hall. Until that time, I'm going to make the living for us both with my hands. Eh? Papa, can I go in with you? All right. We go together, like always. Eh? Come on. Hey. Excuse me, ma. If there is some work I can do for you, huh? I work very hard, very strong. Lift the barrel, clean the glasses, chop the wood. Oh, sorry, mister. We got all the help we need right now. Oh, please, I'd do anything. Eh? We got nothing, mister. Grazie. Can you use a guitar player? Mario. You play the guitar? No, it is my son, Mario, who's play. <sighs> this is a saloon, mister, not a music school. School? Oh, no, senor. My Mario is very good. He's played like an angel. Then take him to a church. <laughs> Go on, get him out of here. Ah, oh, come on, Bernie. Don't be so hard-hearted. Let the little boy play. Yeah, maybe it'll liven the place up a little. Well, if you fellas want to hear him. OK, kid. Papa? What's your name, mister? Bianchi. Nick Bianchi. Mario. Hey, fellas. Mario Bianchi is going to play a little guitar for us. Something us engines can savvy. <laughs> yeah, our, our crew like a rooster. Leastwise, we can understand that. Sounds worse than an ungreased wheel. <laughs> All right, lay off the kid, will you? Maybe we don't like the way he's playing. That is because you do not understand. My son is very good. Someday he will be a great artist. Not if he keeps on making that racket he won't. <laughs> <laughs> what about us, mister? Don't you want something from us? You do not appreciate the good music. Sure we do, sure we do. And right on. <laughs> Here's your money, Mario. 
come. Please, senor. I want no trouble. Take it from him, Papa. Senora, please. Come on. Get it. That'll be about enough, Todd. Butt out, horse. I said that was about enough. We're just trying to have a little fun, horse. You know that. Fine. Now I'll give him back his guitar. Sure, horse. Sure. You fellas won't anymore? That's enough. How much do you think it's worth, Mr. Bianchi? I don't know. It's uh, very old. Hundred dollars take care of it? It's settled. It's a hundred dollars. Huss? A hundred dollars, Huss. That'll clean us out. You could use a little cleaning out. You heard him. All of it. Is that it? That's it. All right, now that you've paid your fine, they'll spend the night in jail and sober up. No, 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 we, we go. No, please, sit down a minute. I'd like to talk to you. You all right, little fella? I'm Adam Cartwright. This is my brother, Haas. How are you, sir? There you are, Mr. Bianchi. Buy that young boy a new guitar. In this wild country, nobody cares about la musica. Only to fight, to fight. No. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Bianchi. My brother Adam there, he cares a great deal for music. You play? No, no, I play at it. Now, what I wanted to tell you was this. Your son is welcome to my guitar until you can get him another one. Oh, no, we couldn't do that. No, 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 please listen to me. As a matter of fact, I have a great idea. Tomorrow, we're having a party. Birthday party. And I think we could use some fine entertainment. Hey, yeah, Adam, that is a great idea. What about it, Mr. Bianchi? Mario? Come on, Mario. I'll even teach you how we bust Bronx. These are nice people, Mario. All right, Papa. And that settles it. We'll pick you up tomorrow afternoon. Meantime, you take that money and get yourself a hotel room. Grazie. Grazie. Well, we better get going on the rest of those birthday presents. You're right. Well, Mr. Bianchi, Mario, hello. Grazie. Mario, I enjoyed your music very much. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at the party. See you, little buddy. Well, another dull day. But it ain't nothing like kitchen chores to take your appetite away. Take away your what? See, this day isn't gonna amount to much, huh? Today's the uh, 23rd, isn't it? No, no, Pa, I think it's the 22nd. Huh? It's the 23rd. I know, because it's a very special day. Oh? Day ends all those kitchen chores. Hop Singh is due back in from San Francisco on the noon stage. Yeah, that's right. For some reason or other, I, I seem to think there's something special about this day, the 23rd, the 23rd. Hey, Pa, you're absolutely right. You know, I almost forgot about it. I promised Dave Stewart I'd take you over there to talk about building that new dam. 
Can't you take care of that yourself? Oh, no, there's only one Ben Cartwright. Besides, they want to talk to you, not me. I'm going to go saddle up the horses. <clears throat> well, I got a busy day in town. Say hello to David Mark for me, will you? Don't you forget Hop Singh here. Yeah. Well, Paul, if you'll excuse me, I got some dishes to wash. Happy birthday, Ben. Telegraph said his sister was too sick to leave her alone. Oh, man, we're in trouble. We got all those folks invited to the party for dinner, and they're going to be hungry. Yeah, I know. I was telling Nick here about our problem, and he said he's a pretty good cook and volunteered to help us out. Oh, yeah? Hey, that's great, Mr. Bianchi. Thanks. Oh, no, no. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Hello, Mr. Haas. Hi, little buddy. Good to see you again. How are you? Well, gentlemen, shall we get to work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I did not have the chance to tell you, but we are very grateful for the help you give us yesterday. Oh, I just hope you're as good a cook as that boy as a guitar player. <laughs> hey, what does that smell so good? Spaghetti. Spaghetti? See si. This? What does it taste like? You never taste spaghetti? I'm gonna give you a taste right now. Here. Taste. Yeah? Uh, uh, take less and turn a fork. Huh? Take, uh, turn a fork. Oh, yeah. Okay. Spin him up on there, huh? There you go. Looks kind of funny, don't it? Hey. It tastes sort of good, though. <laughs> Joseph. I think we better bet the horses down. Yeah, well, well, wait a minute. Well, I'll, I'll take the horses and bet them down. You had, you had a hard day. Go in the house, take it easy. Watch this. Don't tell me you've stopped counting. You don't know my pa very well. He stopped counting years ago. When he was 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's high enough. <laughs> I thought my own sons had forgotten how to count this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We did. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Are you trying to make a dandy out of your father? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Look at this. Oh, this here's little Joe. There is 
one thing I want to thank you for, more than for these beautiful presents. Your friendship. I, I guess I must be the luckiest man around these parts. Well, I don't know how you did it, but doggone, you sure took me by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody take a seat. Make yourselves comfortable. Got a little surprise. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, Master Mario Bianchi will entertain us on the classical guitar. Ladies and gentlemen, with your permission. expect to see us again, huh? Now, you listen to me, little man. You've got almost a hundred dollars of ours. We want it back now. Will you hurry up before one of them cartwrights come in here? But I don't have it, no money. Don't hand us that. Horst gave you the money, now hand it over. I gave it to Mr. Cartwright to put in his safe. You're lying. <laughs> the kid's coming. Let him come in. Papa? Papa, what's wrong? No, n nothing. Nothing, Mario. It, you don't have to worry. No, it doesn't, he? I understand you're rather fond of this kid, the way he plays that music. How would you feel if you never played again? Oh, no, no, please. Please. You can't do that. Where's the money? It's in the safe. I swear. I swear. We'll be back. Now, you listen. You have that money in your pocket. You understand? See? You say one word to the cart rights or the sheriff about us being here, and so help me, that kid of yours won't be the only one that gets hurt. Let's go, Al. Papa, what those men say? Would they do that? I cannot give them that money. It is for you, music. Don't worry now, Mario. Eh? We will be gone before they come back. You mean we will run, Papa? See. Si. Then you are afraid, Papa. See, si. Seguro for you. I am tired of violence to those that I love. Why well, have you forgotten why we left Napoli, why we came into this country? No, Papa. I have not forgotten. Good. Never forget, huh? Never forget. Hey, young fella, you make sure you read the fine print. Hey, don't worry, Pop. Whatever I miss, the stewards will catch. Remember this, little brother. The contract's first and the women second. Big brother, I'm going to be so involved with that small print, I just won't have time for women. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get along with you. <laughs> so 
Slow, huh? Well, I think I'll try some of that good coffee. Hey, Paul. You reckon you could talk him into sticking around till, till Hop Singh gets back? You really like his cooking, huh? I sure do. Well, I'll talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> Train the horses now? Yeah, sure. Can I help you? I thought you were supposed to be practicing that guitar. Oh, I can do that later. Can I ride the horse now? Yeah, I reckon so. Is it hard? Yeah, up you go. There you go. Hold on. I have never enjoyed music the way I did last night. That son of yours is a remarkable musician for a boy his age. <laughs> no, I mean that. He's remarkable. Just love him. Grazie, grazie. Oh. Is it going to be even a better after he takes the lessons in a great music school in New York? Oh, you going to take him to New York? See, si. huh. That's a pretty far distance away, isn't it? Mm. Nick, aren't there any good teachers closer by here, like uh, San Francisco? See, si, but I think we got to New York. I have had my taste over the West. This is not the life I wish for my son. Violence. Hmm? Fight. Fight all the time. Violence. I make a mistake to come here. Nick, out here, we learn to live with violence. Uh, but the West is no place for a man to raise a son like Mario. That's why I go to New York, as soon as I can earn a fare. Hmm. Just had an idea. Nick, suppose you stay here. Just until Hopsing gets back into the cooking around here. Senior. Oh, no, no. Hoss loves your cooking. We all do. Uh, no, look, you'll be doing us a great favor. And you'll be earning some money to get you anywhere to New York. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Grazie. I know Mario will like it here. He's very happy. He can help me with my work in the kitchen, eh? Fine. You know, I just think we've made a good bargain. <laughs> soon as I lasso with one of them old ponies out there, we'll have us a ride. Did you ever get thrown off? Sure have, especially training them old wild ones. I'll learn to train a horse, too. It's gonna take a heap of learning. I'll learn to be strong and not afraid, just like you. <sighs> like me, uh, it's gonna take a whole bunch of eating and growing, young feller. I'd like to stay here and work for you and your father. You would, huh? I don't know about that. You talk to your Paul? I haven't asked him yet. I think if I was you, I'd talk to him first. I'll carry that for you. All right. What's yours? Whichever one I can catch first. Fine job, Mario. I'm real proud of you. How do you like ranch work? There's a lot to be done. Yep. Now, get your lug. Put him over there. Mario, the dishes, you have enough to finish them. Papa, I can finish them later. You will finish them now. But Hoss will be waiting for me. We have work to do. Your work is with me here in the kitchen, huh? But I'm working for Hoss. You ask him. Mario. Papa, please. Mario! Oh, if your old man ain't something, that Papa of yours can sure cook. 
Yeah, but he can't chop wood, train horses, fix fences and wagons like you can, Hoss. Yeah, well, I reckon that's not his line of work. I like this kind of work. My papa wants me to be a musician. What did your mama say about it? She's dead. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I reckon me and you got quite a bit in common. I lost my mama, too, when I was just a little fella. We have a lot in common, yes? We both feel the same, think the same. Yeah, we sure do. We are like partners. Yeah, I reckon we are that. Yeah. Well, yep. We got a lot of work to do yet, partner. Now, Mario, you must understand that we are not the guests in the Cartwrights house. We work here. And you are not a bambino. You must help. I do. I work for Haas. This is not the work. You are only in his way. He says nothing to you because he's a nicer man, that's all. That's not true. I'm his partner. He said I was. Do not uh, answer me back. We really do what we must do. Now drink your milk and finish your work around the kitchen. Papa, I have the right to be what I want to be. You learn to talk to me like this here, eh? We pack our things, we leave right away. Why, because you're afraid of the men who talk to you at the birthday party? What? It's for you that you're afraid, isn't it? Mario. No, I'm going to be like Hoss is. Not a weakling like you, washing dishes, bowing and begging for jobs and money. Mario. That quite well for a man who hates violence. I am sorry, Senor Cartwright. I lose the control. I hate violence. I hate violence because I was born into it. The vendetta in Italy. My family lived it. I lived it. My wife had died in it. The vendetta. The vendetta. I have sworn an oath never to lift my hand again against another human being. Ever since my Leonora's death, I do not fight. I have fled from it, from Italy to America, around the Cape to San Francisco, and not to New York. I must go to New York to find a place of a quiet and a peace, a peace, for my son's sake. You have sons, you must understand. Yeah. Yes, I understand, Nick. Then you understand, too. I must take him away from here before I lose him. Of course you must. You see, my son has the genius, and then nothing must interfere with that. Nothing. But I work for you. That makes you my boss. Well, now, that's... That's partially true, Mario, but sometimes a man, a working man, discovers that he's got more than one boss. When he does, then he's got to decide which one of them he's going to obey. Now, your paw is also your boss man. But I want to be a man like you. I want to make my own decisions. All right. I'll tell you how you can be a man. You go in and apologize to your Paul. You tell him you're sorry. 
You think on that, little buddy. Tried to ride that old mare and she bucked him off or something. Let's get him into the house. No! Don't touch him. I wouldn't worry too much, Mr. Bianchi. Just a few bruises, eh? They'll heal. They'll heal. So you get used to it, eh? Like you get used to the violins, to the feast, to the gun. Is that what you have been teaching my son, a senior? Pretend to be asleep. We must discuss this stupid thing you have done. You might have broken your arm, smashed your hand, and then what happens to your music, huh? That's all that's important to you, Papa, isn't it? The music. You are important to me. Your life. And for you... The music is your life. No. It's important for you, Papa, not me. Your genius is not important to you. You are blessed enough to receive it. You must use it. Practice. Take a lesson. No. I want to stay here and be like Hoss. Oh, you are just a little boy. You do not know what you want. We will do as I say. When you are well enough, we will leave here. And we will go to New York, as we have a plan. I will not let you waste what is in your soul. Found him down by the creek. Eyes are a little runny. Got a little fever. I thought I'd solve him and turpentine him a little bit. He sounds pretty good. <laughs> He'd be all right. Uh, how's, uh, how's Mario? Fine. I tried talking with Nick this morning. He was pretty sore, like, like he blamed me for everything that happened. Oh, I, I don't think he means to. Now, we fathers can be uh, out of ordinary sometimes. I think Nick is afraid he's losing his son to something he doesn't like. What's that? You. Me? Well, not so much you. What you stand for. Oh, I don't, I don't understand. You see, Horace, Mario kind of idolizes you. You're everything he thinks a father should be. All gone, Paul. I, I ain't done nothing on purpose to make him feel that way. Well, of course you haven't. 
Nick asked me to give him his money. He wants to leave just as soon as Mary is well enough. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that, that would be best. Adam and I are going into town. Anything you need? No, thank you, Paul. I'm not sick. I just got a bump on my head. You're not a doctor, neither. Are you angry at me? Is it because I tried to rope the horse? I'm sorry, Hoss. Just being sorry ain't enough, Mario. You did something you were told not to do. Now, that don't sit well with me. But you don't understand, Hoss. No, Hoss. Mario, it's you that don't understand. Now, on a ranch, till you learn how to handle yourself, you don't do nothing except what you're told to do. Now, you went out on your own, and you did something that was very foolish. That's what my papa said. And your pa's right. Your pa's right about a lot of things, too. Like going back to New York and studying your music. No. I want to be a rancher like you. I won't disobey again, Hoss, I promise. Oh, yeah? Already you want to disobey your pa. Now, what makes you think it's going to be so different with me? Give me another chance, Hoss, please. All right, I'll give you a chance. Come on over here and help me. You pump them bellows when I get this fire started here. What are you going to do? Don't ask the dang any questions. Just do what I tell you. Yes, boss. What's that for? It's a branding iron. As long as I got that calf in here, might as well put our mark on. With that? Sure. What else? Won't it hurt? Look, Mario, ranching is more than just training wild horses or even greasing a wagon wheel. It's shooting a horse when he busts a leg. Or a riding fence when the weather's so cold, you might even lose a couple of toes or fingers. And it's branding calves with red hot irons. <laughs> now, when I hold that calf down over there, you bring this iron and you stick it right down on his hip, real firm. I don't want to mess this up, so I'll have to do it again. And don't mind the smell. Come on, it's hot enough. Waiting on. Come on over here and stick it on him. Tears to last through them all? Mario, it's all my fault. I, I've been showing you just the fun side of ranching. Your papa's right. If you're cut out to be a rancher, then 
a rancher is what you ought to be. But if you're cut out to be a musician, then that's what you got to be. Where do you think you're going, little man? I go to look for my son. Do you always pack a bag when you go looking for him? Now, where's the money? I do not have it to give it to you. Now, look, Hoss is the only one who can help you, and he doesn't seem to be around. Where's the money? Where's the money? Search him. If I had not sworn an oath. <laughs> now you, you run in the house and tell your papa you done changed your mind. All right. Papa! Papa! No, Mario! Papa! Grab the kid. Remember what I told you the other night about the kid? Leave him alone! Hoss! 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 Hoss, my papa, they will hurt him! She told me your Paul was a coward. Hoss, they'll hurt him, beat him! Like he's doing all right, little fella. Of course, the odds are a little bit out of favor, ain't they? Okay, hold it. That's about enough. No, no, no. That's my fight. Papa. Come on, Al, put the gun away. You're not going to shoot a man for a few dollars. What kind of a man is he? Does he worship money? It's not just the money, Todd, but I don't reckon you'd understand that. Now, if you two fellas want some more action, I'll be more than happy to oblige you. Two Bianchi's around here. We need a doctor living right here on the premises all the time. <laughs> Hoss, thank you. Oh, don't take nothing to look after these bruises. What with growing up with a little brother like Joe, I've had plenty of practice. No, no, no. I mean, thank you for not interfering, for letting me do it alone. Oh, Nick, yeah. Every man's got to fight his own battle in his own way. I think Mario understands that now, too. I hope so. Thank you, little partner. Papa, how do you feel? Oh, I'm a fine Mario, just a fine. I'm sorry, Papa. Oh, no, Mario. It is I who should be sorry. I expect you to understand too much. I push you too hard. I forget you still. Just a boy. Papa, we will go to New York and I will study my music. You sure that's what you want? Yes, Papa. And how I will study. Where is the money? Yeah, 
Nick, I know you had it. Look into my shoe. In your shoe? <laughs> Shit. Take it off. <laughs> oh, those stupid men. Instead of to fight me, they should have tried to tickle my foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Mario, no. No, no, please. <laughs> no, Mario. <laughs> well, what's going on here? Oh, hi, Paul. Oh, we had a little run in with Al and Todd. And Nick here took care of them in good fashion. He sure did. Nick, are you all right? Oh, sure, sure, Mr. Carter, right? I'm a fine. Yeah. Mario here has changed his mind about ranching, too, Paul. Oh? Well, the New York Music Academy's going to get a star pupil, huh? Yes, sir, Mr. Adam. Yes, sir. Yeah, but until he does, uh, you could have starved to death. I better go fix some supper, right? Oh, eh? come on, Nick. You sure you're up to it? Oh, sure, Mr. Cartwright. I'm a fan. Now I'm a fan. I'll help you, Papa. Come on! Well, it's kind of nice to see them like that again, huh? How did you manage it? Well, I just pretended I was you. Teaching one of us a lesson. And so help me, Paul, I can't figure out how you've made us think it was so rough all these years. I said evening. Leave me alone. Well, now you're not being cordial, and that ain't right, because I'm a very cordial fellow. Will you please go away? I've been away six months. Just come in off the range, only trying to be friendly. Well, why don't you go someplace else and try to be friendly? Be in trouble, Miss McClure. I'm all right, Hoss. No harm. You sure there's nothing I can do? She said no harm. <laughs> Ma'am, would you like me to escort you home? No, I'll be all right now. Thank you. Evening. Evening. Jenkins, everything was done proper? Just like he was one of yours, Hoss. Thank you, sir. Sing is boiling cabbage down. Wish I had needle and thread as fine as I could sew. So that gal to my coat sleeves down the road I'd go. Whoa! Whoa, stop! Your pardon. I just came into town. I heard about this. 
I sure appreciate your kindness, but I'd like to bury my brother and myself. I know. I can tell by your look what you're thinking. You're figuring I'm aiming to make trouble, but I ain't. What's happened's happened, and I don't know the right or wrong of it. I ain't the judge. We're, we're hoping to have a real orderly funeral, friend. Oh, I'm for order. Indeed, I am. But this is my brother. And if it's all the same to you good people, I'd like to bury him myself. Would you gentlemen give me a hand, please? I'd like to thank all of you, particularly the party who thought well enough of my brother to give him this here funeral. Thank you. Get up, Molly. Boil them cabbage down, down, turn them whole cakes round, round. The only song that I can sing is boiling cabbage down. Wish I had needle and thread as fine as I could sew. So that gal to my coat sleeves down the road I'd go. Boiling cabbage down, down, turn them whole cakes round, round. The only song that I can sing is boiling cabbage down. This fence could use some mending. Yeah. Now, you haven't heard a thing I've said all day. Um, I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get on that fence. Look, you're eating yourself up with guilt, Hoss. It's no good. Joe, I ain't ain't no good at killing folks. You didn't mean to kill him. Everybody knows that. I just can't get him off my mind. It's, it's like he's following me around or something. Boss, it's happened, it's over with, and you're gonna have to forget it. You're right. I'm gonna forget it. Let's get that, that fence fixed. Okay. We need a wagon load of rails. Knows the trouble I seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows the trouble I seen. Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes I'm... Oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. What are you doing? I'm digging a grave for my brother. You're going to bury your brother here on our land? Such a fine spot, under a tree with all this grass around. Look, Mr. Bowling, I'm terribly sorry about your brother. There ain't nothing I can do or say that bring him back or make either one of us feel any better, but I can't let you bury him right here. I... 
I gotta lay over and work. I... I'm sorry, I just, just can't let you do it. Well, that's a shame. That's, that's, a, re that's a real shame. I, I, I know how you feel. I, you would have liked it here, though. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to trespass. I just didn't mean to cause any inconvenience. I'll fill up the hole. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all the same. Go on, Joe. Nobody knows the trouble I seem. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows the trouble I seem. Glory, hallelujah. Mountain, I ain't got no home. I'm drunk as the devil, oh, leave me alone. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I know you of old. You rob my poor pockets of silver and gold. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If I don't get rye whiskey, I surely will die. If the ocean was whiskey and I was a duck, I'd swim to the bottom and never come up. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If I don't get rye whiskey, I surely will die. <laughs> you sure know a lot of songs. I learned them in a lot of places. How long are you aiming on staying here, mister? As long as I can sell some of my wares. Reckon my wife could use some of your pots and pans. Stop by our place. Bring your wares. Well, that's kindly of you, Mr. Gilbert. Very kindly. Hey, how about another song? Well, I'll be pleased if you like. When he was a cowboy, he learned to throw the line. He learned to pocket money and also dress so fine. He went out on the prairie to learn to kill and steal. When he killed a cowboy, how happy he did feel. For working he's not able and begging he's too low. But killing is so dreadful to the gallows he must go. Stop it! What's the matter, boy? That song. It's just a song from the prairie. Don't carry no particular point. I killed your brother and you hate me for it. Why don't you just come on out and say it? Hate you? No, you're wrong, boy. I don't hate nobody. I don't want to hurt you, boy. I want to forgive you. A man kills somebody, he needs to be forgiven. What's done's done. I'm just a peaceful traveling man, trying to earn an honest dollar. I'll buy all your merchandise. You clear out of town tonight. That's kindly of you, son. I couldn't do that. You'd just be buying my goods because you felt you owed me something. I got the money. Keep your money, son. Don't try and buy forgiveness. I give it to you freely. <laughs> Kind of late last night, didn't you, son? Yes, sir. Couldn't sleep, so I rode into town for a spell. Uh, with a work day in front of you? Might have been a good thing I did, Paul. Hmm. 
How do you figure? I saw bowling. Well, that wasn't such a good idea, was it? Maybe not, but I learned something. What was that? He's buried his brother. You know where? On the side of the road going into Virginia City. Every time I ride by it going or coming, I gotta go right by that grave. Well, Hoss, uh, he can bury his brother any place he's allowed to. Now, now, pause right, Hoss. I thought you were gonna try to forget about this thing. I was, but he ain't gonna let me. He's finished his business. He's buried his brother. Now, why don't he go on? Well, kind of hard to answer. Well, I'm gonna find an answer. <laughs> Sometimes things happen. Accidents, innocent accidents. Nothing you can do about them. Best thing to do is leave them be. Oh, I gotta find out. I gotta. I gotta. Oh. Are you going someplace? Yeah, looks like Horst may be chasing up trouble. I think somebody ought to keep an eye on him. Well, I raised him to look after himself, and I think he can manage. I gotta go along with Adam, Pa. I'd feel a lot better if one of us went with I'd feel him. a lot better if you just loaded up that wagon, both of you. Where are you going? Oh, I just remembered I've got to go into town. I've got to get some supplies. Funny. Well, uh, what's that? He just picked up supplies yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he wouldn't be going after Hoss. After all, he raised Hoss to take care of himself. Oh, yeah. Well, let's load the wagon. <clears throat> Clarence Bowling. He left right after the fire. What fire? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, Cartwright. That peddler's wagon was burned to a crisp. How did it happen? Anybody see it? Don't you know, Hoss? Any of you other fellows know where he is? He's inside, having that burned hand taken care of. Morning, friend. I want to talk to you. And talk away. In private. There's no point in harboring secrets. We're among friends. Look, I said I had business with you. Boy, I'd like you to let me be. Get up. Horse, you've done enough. You stay out of this, Gilbert. You better stay put, peddler. He probably wants to take you out somewhere where he can shoot you. Horse. <laughs> Hold it, Gilbert. Hold it. Hey, wipe your face. Paul, that Gilbert accused me. Go home. Me. But Paul, go home, son. You're a violent man, friend. Violent, son. Bowling, I'm Ben Cartwright. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Cartwright. My son isn't a violent man. He's very sorry for what happened to your brother. 
Of course, so am I. Well, that's kind of you, Mr. Cartwright. But it's over now. My son doesn't seem to think it is. He has the feeling that you have some sort of vengeful thoughts against him. No man has a right to vengeance. Least of all, a poor peddler like me. Why are you staying on in town? What's keeping you here? I don't rightly know. You see, my wagon burned down this morning, and I got no trade now. No place to go. I'm sorry for what happened to your wagon, but how long do you intend to stay on here? Well, now, Mr. Cartwright, that's hard to say. <laughs> I have to give that some thought. Yes, sir. I'll have to think about that one. Morning, sir. Boil them cabbage down, down, turn them whole cakes round, round. The only song that I can sing is boil them cabbage down. Wish I had needle and thread as fine as I could sew. So that gals my coat sleeves down. <laughs> Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, would I be right in assuming that you're Mrs. McClure? Yes. I hope you won't think me forward, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name's Clarence Bowling. You're the peddler. That's my trade, yes, ma'am. I'm also a bit of a hand at chopping. Uh, with your permission, ma'am. I understand you saw my brother get shot. Yes. How'd it come about? Do you happen to remember? I'd rather not talk about it, Mr. Bowling. Oh, and here I pop up and remind you of all the unpleasantness again. Well, I hope you forgive me, ma'am. Sometimes I guess I'm a little short of manners. That's all right, Mr. Bowling. Boil them cabbage down, down, turn them whole cakes round, round. The only song that I can sing is boil them cabbage down. Boil them cabbage down, down, turn them whole cakes round, round. The only song that I can sing is boil them cabbage down. Staring into that fireplace for quite some time. Why don't you go to bed like Adam and little Joe? Just doing a little thinking, Paul. Well, so was I. I was thinking I'd be pleased if you didn't go near bowling anymore. Paul, what am I supposed to do? Dig a hole and crawl in it till he decides to leave town? Peddlers have as much right in town as we have, horse. Every place I turn, I see his face. That fire and that window. The... Sometimes I'm almost to the ground. Yes, my Lord. If you get there before I do. Evening, Judd. Mr. Cartwright. Judd, why were you singing that song? I don't know. I guess I just felt kind of musical. Where'd you learn it? The song? Picked it up in town. I'm a nice peddler. Don't sing it no more. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. It's all right, Jen.
sorry, Ben. Boys. Well, Fred, what brings you out this way? A uh, little business. I think deputies had business on Sunday. Well, something's come up. The sheriff wanted you to know about it, Ben. Oh, what's happened, Fred? Well, I'm afraid there's going to be an inquest. An inquest? Well, it's nothing to get upset about, Haas. Just a legal technicality. Why, all of a sudden, Fred, what happened? Well, I don't rightly know. All I can say is her papers are being drawn up. Sheriff's orders are that Haas isn't to go anyplace. Just stay put here on the ranch. What's that supposed to mean, Fred? I'm, I'm under arrest? If you were, Haas, I'd be taking you in. Just abide by the sheriff's orders. Well, we'll do that, Fred. I know you will, Ben. Sorry I had to bring you the news. Sure. Trial, ain't it, Paul? Well, just because there's going to be an inquest doesn't mean there's going to be a trial. I say there is. Let me tell you what's going to happen. No, 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 us. They're going to come out here and they're going to haul me into court. They're going to ask the widow McClure to tell again what she saw. Well, this time she, she likely ain't going to remember. You saw who she came into church with this morning. It's taking quite a big jump, isn't it, Oz? Boy, I ain't gonna have a chance. My son. If there's gonna be a trial, it's gonna be a fair one. Because we're gonna see to that. But right now, there are a couple of other things we're gonna see to. What are we gonna do? Well, you're gonna stay right here, just like the deputy said. The boys and I are riding into town. For what? Wanna to talk to the sheriff about a couple of things? Come, boys. may be well and good, but for my part, I still say we don't know what really happened. All we know is the sheriff said the widow saw it, and he's satisfied. Will it? look much like Sunday, does it? No, it don't at that. Ben, the temperature in the town is up. Meaning what? Meaning that people talk. And they talk to you into an inquest, huh? Well, let's just say that a lot of questions were being asked that I didn't have the answers for. Meaning what? Meaning that I'm drawing up these legal papers and I'm going to have to serve them on horse. This happened kind of sudden like, didn't it? Well, people get brought up. Things happen kind of sudden. And Ben, depending on the inquest, horse might be bound over for trial. Roy, if there is a trial because of the inquest, I'm not going to try to prevent it. You know that. I do. Only one thing troubles me. You say people are talking, feelings running a little high. A man goes to trial under those conditions, justice can sometimes be a little short. Now, wait a minute, Dad. Whenever there's a trial in my territory, I guarantee justice. All right, Roy. You finish up with those papers, I'll take them out to Hoss. No, I'm going with you. I'm going to bring Hoss right back here for his own safety. Well, you do what you have to do. It's understood. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows Shut the trouble Shut I see. Shut up! I've you not to sing it! Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Oh, yeah. What do you want? I don't want nothing directly, boy. Nice afternoon. What are you doing out here? 
fact of the matter is, I come to bring you news, boy. You get out of here. Well, you might hear me out, son. There's talking in town, real talk. Talk is growing. I figure maybe people are fixing to come out and get you. Well, your, your daddy's gone into town. He's seen it firsthand. You can't tell about people, boy. They got feelings. They act quick-like. Folks can come out here and string you up just like that. And that would be a shame on a nice Sunday afternoon like this. I told you to get. Now, you better now, get. Wait a minute, boy. I'm just trying to help you. Time back, I seen a man strung up. It ain't pretty. It ain't pretty, boy. I watched him dangling there in the wind. That's an awful sight. Son, what are you up to? I'll kill him. I'll kill him! Take it easy, horse. How'd this happen? I come here to make the peace with him, and, and he said on me. That's a lie! That's a liar, Paul! I come here with forgiveness in my heart, but that boy, he must be wild in his mind. Are you carrying any weapons? Sheriff, I carry only love and kindness for my neighbor. Do me the favor to search my person. I'll do that. You're not carrying any weapons. Hoss, your Paul and I agreed that the best thing for you to do would be to come back into town with me now. Yeah, Hoss. Awesome. Boy, stay here. I'll ride into town with a horse. Well, now, Mr. Cartwright, I'm sorry. I, I really am. This should feel better. Thank you, ma'am. You're so thoughtful. I'm very appreciative. You really should see a doctor. Well, he couldn't tend me proper. The pain's not on the face, ma'am. It's in the heart. I can't understand why Hoss would do such a thing. He's big, quick. Not one for thinking things through, I suppose. It was simply brutal of him. Now, I wouldn't be too hard on him, Mrs. McClure. A man with a temper is his own worst enemy. Probably set on me before he realized. Kind of like he set on my brother, maybe. Mr. Bowling. I don't think he tried to kill your brother. Oh, no, of course he didn't. Of course, I don't know the circumstances. And it isn't something I'd ask you, ma'am, knowing how you feel about it, not wanting to talk about it. Mr. Bowling, maybe I should talk about it. Maybe you should know. Now, I wasn't making inquiries. I really wasn't. I was alone on the street at night. Your brother was after my attentions. He was drunk. Ha stopped him and told him to leave me alone. And the shooting? Your brother drew a gun. Haas grappled with him. The gun went off. He couldn't help himself. Did you actually see the trigger pulled? Wasn't it dark, ma'am? It was dark, but I saw the struggle plainly. And after it happened, you told it just that way to the sheriff? Yes. Well, wouldn't you think that would satisfy all parties? I suppose there's no explaining folks. They're talking in town, asking questions. I reckon you're going to have to tell your story at the inquest. If they ask me, I will. Ma'am, 
I don't want to appear forward, but I'd like to beg a favor of you. What is it, Mr. Burling? Well, my poor brother, he made a mistake for which I'm sorry. Well, I just wasn't around to look over him. And he needed someone. Well, now he's gone. And I was thinking maybe there wouldn't be no harm if we was to protect his name. What do you mean? I was thinking that, well, maybe you could say something kindly about Arthur at the, at the inquest. Like he was shot tending to his own business. But that wouldn't be the truth. What's the truth, ma'am? The truth can be colored. You say that Hoss Cartwright and my brother struggled over a gun. The gun went off. Someone pulled the trigger, perhaps intentionally. How can you be sure it was an accident? Appears we got company. Good evening, Miss McClure. Mr. Cartwright. I was just riding by. I thought I'd have a word with you. Please come in. Thank you. Evening, Mr. Cartwright. You'll get around, Mr. Bowling. Uh, I guess I just happen to be in the places you come to. Uh, Miss McClure, I, uh, I was kind of hoping we could talk privately. Well... Whatever you have to say, you can speak freely. Yes, well, as you know, there, there's apt to be a, an inquest about the, about the shooting. And of course, we figured that you'd be telling the court just what you told the sheriff. Well, I, I, I don't know right off. Well, you told the sheriff that the shooting was accidental. Well, I... What's the matter, Mrs. McClure? I said I thought maybe it was that way. Well, you told the sheriff that Hoss and, and the man were struggling for the gun and it, it went off accidentally. Well, I, I did see them struggle and the gun went off, but I, I don't know how it actually happened. Mrs. McClure, my son's life may depend on what you say in court. Now, you're the only witness he's got. He needs you to tell exactly what you saw. I'll do all I can. I'm sure you will. Well, thank you for seeing me. I've got to see the sheriff. Roy, I know there's something strange going on at Mrs. McClure's. But, Ben, Mrs. McClure is a good, honest woman. Will you listen to me, Roy? Yeah. Now, why is Bowling out there this time of night? I... Now, why is Mrs. McClure suddenly so unsure of her testimony? I don't know about that, but I do know that there's no law against a peddler talking to her. Well, I know there's no law against anybody talking to her, but... Well, couldn't you warn Mrs. McClure against being unduly influenced by him? All right, I'll do that. First thing in the morning. Oh, why not tonight, right now? Because I'm all alone here. I'm not going to leave you, Garden Horse, your own son. I heard you talking out there, Paul. I told you. Oh, Hoss, all, all I said was that Widow McClure was a little confused. Oh, there's, no, oh. there's nothing definite, Hoss. If the widow changes her testimony, I'm a dead man. Oh, son. I should never have let Roy take me. I should have run. Uh, you know better than that. I never taught you to run. Look, Hoss, I'm not going to wait till tomorrow. I'm going to get Mrs. McClure back here tonight. Enjoy whittling, ma'am. 
Kind of keeps a man calm. A situation like this, a man needs to keep calm. Mr. Bowling, to threaten will not make me change the truth. Threaten, ma'am? As I said, what is the truth? I just want to make sure you tell the right truth. But you pose a problem, ma'am. You hesitate about my truth. I can't afford that. I surely can't. Going somewhere, ma'am? I'm cold. I thought I'd start a fire. You disappoint me. You surely do. You weren't going to use this, were you? Let me go, please. Things are getting mighty awkward between us, aren't they? I can't let you go. You're not sure of the truth. Maybe there's an answer. Maybe I got the answer right here. What is it, Mrs. McClure? What is it? Bowling. When I wouldn't change my testimony, he tried to kill me. Well, we'd better get to the sheriff. You're making a big mistake. Roy, get the keys, let me out of here. Get it. You're gonna regret this, horse. I probably will, Roy. But like I say, I ain't got much choice, have I? He 
easy, boy. If I can find that saddle, we're gonna get out of here. Roy! In here! Miss McCord, just sit down over here. Roy! What? Roy, what happened? Somehow, Horse got a gun. He escaped. This we better find Horse be be before he finds Bolling. The keys are in there. Where? Which keys? That brass one. The big one. Look. Thanks. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Welcome to your friend. I've been waiting. I just wanted you to know what it would be like to be killed. I don't want you to die that easy. When they find us, friend, it's going to be self-defense. You fired at me, and I killed you in self-defense. See how easy, boy? <laughs> just like it was for you and my brother. Again, right now, Judd and I are kind of busy. Well, I'll be dead burned. <laughs> hey, Joe, Adam, come in here and see what Judd's got. Hey, how many you got, Pa? Uh, four so far. It's a stray you found the other night, huh? Yes, sir. Didn't know what I was getting mixed up into when I gave her that drink of milk. Now I'll have to change your name. Why? I've been calling her Sam. <laughs> <laughs>